Hello and welcome. This is Kristen from Life of Crafting. And I'm going to talk you through my thoughts on this November 2021 uh, sheet loads of cards. This is also going to be um, like a, a, how do you, as many as challenge. I guess that May May has done. Ooh, it's a little chilly here today in New Jersey. Um, so I need my tea. Um, I started this challenge with the April 2022 challenge, and I wanted to do a card sheet load sketch every week and try and use up a paper pack with each sketch. And what I started with was a uh, paper pack from Stampin' Up! that was called uh, Boutique Floral, Floral Boutique, something like that. Anyway, the pattern was um, navy and white, and that was it. So I've kind of got <laughs> off track already after one month um, because all these other ones have called for three different patterns and it was very tough because um, I, I just didn't like the, I wanted to, I didn't want everything to be monochromatic the way it was with that paper pack. So I got into a second paper pack, then I got into a third paper pack and now I'm gonna do this one as a fourth. But what I've chosen here was I have um, multiples. I fell in love with this paper pack from Stampin' Up! And it's called uh, Poinsettia Place. This was a 2020, if I'm not mistaken, release from Stampin' Up! I really wish they copyrighted their stuff, so you kind of had an idea. Um, but anyway, this paper pack is supposed to be their bumblebee color. They're garden green, they're old olive, they're real red, soft suede, and they're white. So for me, um, I was looking for something because if you look at this paper um, sketch, what they do, what she does here is she comes up with a sketch and she pretty much uses up the full sheet when um, she does the sketch. So for this particular pattern, it's gonna come in with three. So again, I didn't wanna use that original paper pack that I had because it just really would not flow here. So, um, I, again, I, I saw this sketch and she's got this drawing here of using something circular, which right away my mind went to a wreath right? Like doing a design for Christmas and making that a wreath. So that said to me, okay, I'm going to go back to something Christmas related. And I said, okay, I'm going to pull in a pack of paper that I've been wanting to use up. I loved this paper pack when it came out. I, I really am a more traditional um, type of, that. that's just what I, I go to is the more traditional. So this paper pack was just like one I loved and I haven't used it. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna do this whole paper pack. So let's show you the paper pack. Um, you get two sheets and this one has this kind of like ivory background with poinsettias that backs up to a pine cone on brown. So I thought they mix and match very well. Then the second pattern and third pattern are this like ivy and white berries on it. It looks like a very light, light green background. And the back of that is more poinsettias. And again, because of the name, you know, expect that it's gonna be a lot of poinsettias in here, right? This pattern I loved with the red berries and um, a wood grain. So when you start looking at this pattern paper, you can see like, I'm gonna be able to mix and match these so well smaller poinsettia pattern that one just looks so busy to me though um but it has this like scrolling pattern um on the back another poinsettia or i'm sorry another pine bough and pine cone and the back of that just has like a, a pine bell on green tone on tone and then i loved this one the bright red and those berries on the holly leaves and then it's just another green so to me I can do a lot of mixing and matching because what she's doing in this sketch is you're supposed to use six six inch by six inch sheets of, so she was, I was supposed to be using six inch 
which obviously is not going to be difficult. I'm going to just cut these down and make them into um, four panels per each. But you cut each one of them in the same sketch, and then you're supposed to mix and match the different panels. And I figured they're going to look great, uh, mix and matched, and I can just do, um, like I said, a, uh, a wreath on the front. Um, I haven't decided yet what this wreath is going to be. I have several selections. I've got this memory box double arch, which you cut a bunch of these out and then you just lay them in a circle. That's one option. I have this Impression Obsessions ho Holly wreath and they have birds that go on and I thought that would be a great idea. Um, I have this old stylized Woodlands stamp set from Tim Holtz. Again, I could stamp and um, just fussy cut. I don't think that would be too difficult. And then I have some poinsettia ones that came, like stamp sets and all that came with this. I'm thinking I could do a poinsettia on the front, which is what I was thinking now that I've laid it out, how much green there is here. Um, a poinsettia with a sediment may not be a bad idea either. So I am going to, right now, just start cutting all of this paper first into six by six, and then I'm going to cut them into these, um, the, the one is just two inch strips, and you get a one inch, two inch, and three inch, and then just the card base from behind it. And then you're supposed to bring in two sheets of um, cardstock, one of which is just basically for the sentiment, and the other one is going to just be for the layers um, behind these. So uh, I'll cut those out uh, according to whatever patterns I wind up using. So I'm gonna start cutting those, and when I come back, I will have a card laid out for you and show you how I'm gonna put these together. Hello, it's Kristen again, and I am back with the final wrap up of what I did with this November 2021 sheet load of cards sketch from Call Me Crafty Al. Called for three different um, printed papers to be used in the design. And as I mentioned previously, I was going to bring out a brand new pack from Stamping Up that was the Poinsettia Place Designer Series paper. Um, if you're not familiar with Stamping Up, which I'm sure most of us are, their paper packs contain um, 12 different prints. Uh, they're double-sided papers and you get uh, two sheets of each paper uh, combination. So there's really 12 sheets, six combinations. Um, so I've laid out, I'll lay out all of my um, final cards and how I did it. Cause to me, I just wanted to use up the paper pack and I did, I got 48, 48 different cards out of this paper. And here is what I have left um, before I get into the cards. I just have these, eight inch by like one and a half inch strips. And again, it will be one of each print of paper, um, or I can choose to do two or six different papers. So this is another card that I will do after this um, particular series I'm doing right now on this sheet loader card. So this was the one that I'm gonna put together right now because what happened was I started with this sketch thinking this circle would be perfect for doing a wreath. And I would just do the sentiment behind it to come through instead of on top the way that um, the sketch had it. And I'm gonna tell you, I got through making, I guess, eight of these, and I was making the four for, this, uh, for the, the next sketch, and it was just taking so much time. That is one thing I would recommend is that you really pay attention to how long these are going to take. Here is what I chose to use to make the wreath up from. So this was the start was I started with the Impression of Sessions Holly wreath. Um, and it's a little the way I put it back. You get two different dies. The birds were in the center and I snipped them out since the last time and then you get this well when you die cut this section up here was really slim pickings it, it just seemed very off center so I actually did two of these for each wreath 
so I could get that more full plump look all the way around it. So that was like the first thing. But then when I did that, for some of this, this paper, this paper pack had a lot of really darker toned earth tones. Like um, the only pop of color, I'm trying to get the, the papers back that I had from the sketches. The only one that really had any pop of color were these ones that had like some of the red. And uh, so like I said, if you see what I'm showing here, they're very earth tone and darker. Um, this was the only other like pop of red and the rest of it was just whites, dark greens and dark browns. So I, I felt like just doing the green wreath got to be a point where it needed some more pop. And that's where this memory box bramble circle came in. And I decided to also add another pop of color by cutting the birds out in a gold foil. So I did a gold foil in the memory box bramble circle and the birds to give it this pop of color. And then the berries were getting hard for me because I didn't have a like Nouveau drop in red. And if I tried to color them red with a marker with the green paper, it just really drowned out. The, it just really overshadowed. I couldn't get that bright red. So I went with these rhinestones I had and trying to get them on here with the glue adhesive back on the back. It was like one I bought from Hobby Lobby where it's a long strip of like adhesive and then they just put the, the rhinestones on top of it. Well, you can't cut that stuff so that you don't have adhesive showing. So I was basically scraping them up with an X-Acto knife off this adhesive. So it was taking forever. Um, I'm going to put these together so that you can see a little bit of a difference I found with doing, trying to do the sentiment. The sentiment I pulled out of was from the Cherish the Season from Stamping Up. I have the China version, AliExpress Ali version of it, and it was this Merry Christmas. And um, what I wound up doing with that to get the sentiment how I needed it was I have some of these cardstock bases that I have cut out that I was trying to do with my bone folder and I really messed them up. So I just took what was this mess up and I just stamped using the um, soft suede stamping up color is what this um, color was. It's just a darker earth, really, really earth tony kind of, well, I guess all browns are earth tone, aren't they? But this was just like a really nice shade to match this. And I stamped it in the middle. And the reason I did that was um, so that I had, and I'm gonna cut this off right now. I, I just did them randomly so that I could cut them how I needed them. Because what started with the wreath kind of laid the sentiment in one spot. But when I realized how long it was really going to take me to get all of these wreaths together that I was going to need, it was going to be a lot, a lot of time, a lot more time than it took me. So I thought, what else did I have in my stash that was round? I wanted something round. And I thought, okay, well, I'll do this poinsettia that I had that was part of the stamp set that went with this suite from Stampin' Up. And what happened was I thought I could just do the, the poinsettia and then kind of put the sentiment to the side, but the sentiment was too long and I really didn't want to have to go back to the to figuring out what other stamp sentiment I wanted to use. I did have another one in here. I was trying to use this one. It says Christmas wishes, but it really was not. It was too, it was too big to lay out. I probably could have made it work, but I said, you know what? I already had the, the, the block going for this Merry Christmas. So what I wound up doing was I cut these in the long strips so that when I do the poinsettia, um, my blade needs to be cut. So I have to, I apologize. I have to give a hair cut to all these. I have a little bit of an ink like mess up over here, which doesn't matter, but to do the poinsettia, I needed it to fall visually a little bit more to the center. So that one, I needed a little bit of a length to that left side. 
and I was trying to leave it so that brown layer came through. And, but I didn't want it to go past this one. So I kind of had to play with this to get the this where I wanted it to lay. And then I just fishtailed the one end. So that was one reason why I didn't want to cut the paper and then stamp because I didn't really know where it was gonna fall on these ones. These ones I also needed to add a, a card stock piece to the left side, which by doing this also gave me a perfect width of a scrap to add to this left side. Ooh. So I, I could just add that. So I did those first, but then this poinsettia is made with two, they have four sizes of dies, the center, the smaller, the like medium, this I guess would be extra small, small. This was like medium and then there's a larger one and the larger one just was too much to take over. So I cut two of this medium base and then just offset them. But here's the other thing, the reason why that I kind of wanted to fool around with where this laid was I don't have an exact shifting to make this flower every time. So I'm just putting glue in the center of this so I can kind of shift this flower around before I lay it down. So I am not covering up the Merry Christmas part and I'm staying to the side. So this allowed me to also just kind of play around with this. And then I just used my reverse tweezers to let that um, dry. Let me take the sketch out of here. Now to get this to lay for the wreath, again, I told you the wreath had this really thin section up top and I had to cut two. Well, when I did the second one, I cut the birds off. I cut it here at the holly leaf and over here at the berries. And then I just rotated this around. So there's a fluffy part at the top, which is where I cut those birds off. And then I had the birds at the bottom, but they don't fall perfectly every time. So I have to take this Merry Christmas and basically lay it where I think I want the message to come through. And then I'm just approximately cutting off the end where I want it on that side. And like I said, I kind of have to play with it so I can get the Merry at the M to show through and the S in Christmas and cut those. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm also going to flag these ends and I flag the ends to give it a little bit of, um, you know, so it doesn't just look like it's, it, it's an afterthought, um, but it also allows me to know that I'm not having to be perfect. And again, I'm not really good with flagging my stuff and it doesn't have to be flagged perfectly either. Do a little trim here. And then all I had to do with this is just put some glue on either end and go back and lay that down. And the birds, I mean, as long as they're on the bottom, there's no perfect place to how they had to sit on that branch. So, you know, you can see my birds are a little lower on this one than it is on this one. It doesn't, doesn't really make a difference. I don't feel anyway. And then I just put a little bit of glue on the back of the wreath. And I found that the banner was the one that really gave it where it adhered. And I tried to more centrally locate this where the ones for the poinsettias I pulled to the bottom. I centrally located more of the wreath. So I'm hoping you like the design. What I will show you is how I wound up coming out with, oh, the other thing I did was I pulled in this memory box, Holly Dub Arch. And what this did was, um, I was gonna use this one at first, but the berries were so big and I didn't have a uh, Nuvo drop as I explained. So it was really getting hard to try to figure out what um, rhinestones I was going to put in there. I don't know if you can tell there's like different sizes and stuff. So this was something that as I had scraps, I started cutting it, it, some of my die cuts had space left after doing the, the wreaths that I was able to get um, 
extra pieces to put in here that I have now cut ahead of time that I can use this for our future projects. So this was one that, um, like I said, I kind of try to pay attention as I'm die cutting as to can I do something at the same time and make the best use of my, you know, same actions to go through. Um, so here was the combinations. Now this combination is where I gave up on going from the transition of the wreath to the to point side, but that is the one combo. Then um, here is the other 11 designs of the way I positioned the paper. And you can tell because the background is going to be different. Some of these I may, um, it was getting tough in this paper pack with the screen that's in here. They don't lay it out. All they say that's in this paper pack was the garden green and the olive green. I really think this is their soft succulent color, but they don't mention on the packaging what it could be. So I had a little bit of a hard time trying to mix and match because some of these were um, very bright in the background, like these two but some of them were very much muted, like something like this. And I had to pay attention, as I mentioned, to that the flowers went up. And I did mess up on this card. And if you look, here's, here's all of the combinations. Um, the flowers to get them to go up in this background paper, which is how I started to realize I messed up. I had to move that panel from the right side to the left side, but I don't think you really make, make much difference in the note. You also notice I used like two different greens. Um, again, some of these papers lent themselves to using all different colors of stuff. This one let me use like a garden green versus the olive green in this one. So, so that's that one. I guess that's that. So I hope you enjoyed this series. Like I said, it really allowed me to use up a full 12 by 12 paper pack and I will be able to get 48 cards out of this and I'm expecting to get at least another two cards out of those um, scraps that I still have left. So I'm going to say I'm going to get at least 50 cards by using this sketch, trying to mass produce and if I hadn't wanted to get so like you know involved with making this um, really stand out. I probably could have done this way, 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 way much faster if I, I had kept her sketch and just used like a twine or a, um, like a thin thread or something and did the sentiment. I probably could have had these done literally in about six or eight hours, but not me. <laughs> I always get more involved. So I hope you enjoyed this series. I would love to have you as a subscriber so you can see a lot more of what I have planned and going on because I do do have quite a bit more already in line to go with more of the sheet load of cards and more of my um you know as many as series in addition to that so i appreciate your time and watching all this and i hope you have a great day